In this video, we will take a look at how collision handling is performed using the method quadratic probing. So before we go into how quadratic probing works, let's first understand the reason for quadratic probing. So we have come up with quadratic probing after seeing the disadvantage of linear probing. So let's look at what this disadvantage was. In the previous video of linear probing, after inserting all the keys into the nine element, the ten element array, we got an array which looked something like this. So this is after linear probing. So after linear probing, we get an array which looks like this. Now, the problem with this kind of linear probing is that a lot of elements start clustering. That is, elements will start to be stored in groups or in a group of consecutive filled cells. So what is the problem with this kind of um, clustering? Suppose I want to insert a key which has the hash value 0. Then I need to probe through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then only I'll come to a empty cell which is at 6. So the problem with clustering or the problem with consecutively filled cells of a hash table is that when a cluster forms, if I want to add an element to that cluster, I will have to go through many probes. And so it's not going to be fast. So what is the disadvantage of linear probing? The disadvantage of linear probing is going to be clustering. What is clustering? The accumulation of elements in consecutive cells of the hash table. What does this do? Why is it not good? Because when we want to add an element to the cluster, we will have to go through, we have to probe through many indexes to finally add that element. So it is not very time efficient. So for this, what is our solution? The solution to this is quadratic probing. So let's take a look at what quadratic probing is. Now, in linear probing, what did we have to check? Which indexes do we check when we want to add an element? We iteratively check the index of hash value of the key plus i mod n. This is for linear probing. For quadratic probing, we are going to do the same thing, but instead of adding i, we are going to add i square. This is the formula for quadratic probing. The indexes which we will check is going to be hash of key plus i square mod n iteratively. So all the algorithms, everything is going to be the same, but instead of hash key plus i, we will say hash key plus i power 2. So let's see an example of quadratic probing. Let's say my hash function is going to be x mod 10. Let's say that my keys will be 2, 12, 22 and say 32. So as you can see my hash values are all going to be equal to 2. 
So in linear probing, what would you expect? You would expect all those values to come cluster around 2 and its consecutive cells. But let's see how it's going to change for quadratic probing. So first I will have my array, which is going to be of 10 elements. This is going to be my bucket array. One by one, I will start storing the keys. I have to store key 2. Where do I place it? At index 2. Now I have to place key 12. Where should I place it? At index 2. But index 2 is full. So where should I place this? I need to place this 12 at 2 plus 1 square. So now 2 plus 1 square is going to equal to 3. So I will place it here. Now I have to place 22. 22 mod 10 is 2. It's 2 is the index 2 is not available, so I will check 2 plus 1 square. 2 plus 1 square, which is equal to 3, is not available, so I will check 2 plus 2 square. 2 plus 2 square is equal to 2 plus 4, and so it is equal to 6. Index 6 is free, so I can add 22 here. Now I'll check 32. 32 hash value is 2. 2 is not empty, so I will check 2 plus 1 square. 3 is not empty, which is 2 plus 1 square, so I will check 2 plus 2 square. 2 plus 2 square is not empty, and so I will check 2 plus 3 square mod 10. 2 plus 9 mod 10 is equal to 11 mod 10, which is equal to 1, and so my 32 will be placed here. As you can see, there is no clustering in consecutive elements as seen in this example. So suppose I want to add an element to index 3, I'll only have to probe once. Or if I have to add an index, if I have to add an element to index 2, I'll only have to probe twice. So using quadratic probing, we can counteract this clustering problem. Now let's say I'm going to add another element, say 42. So if I want to add 42, First I will go 2 plus 0 square, then 2 plus 1 square, 2 plus 2 square, then 2 plus 4 square, sorry 2 plus 3 square, then 2 plus 4 square. 2 plus 4 square will equal to 16 plus 2 which is going to equal to 18. 18 mod 10 is equal to 8. So my 42 will come to this position. Now suppose I want to add another element. Let's say I want to add 52. So I have traversed all the way till 2 plus 4 square. 2 plus 5 square is going to equal to 27 and I will add something here. Say I want to add 52 here. 2 plus 5 square 27, 27 mod 10 is equal to 7. Now let's say I want to add 62. So I have traversed all the way till 2 plus 5 square which is equal to 27. Now I will do 2 plus 6 square which is equal to 2 plus 36 which is equal to 8. That will also be filled. Then I'll do 2 plus 9 square. So then it will be 81 plus 2 which is equal to 3. Then 3 is also filled. Then I'll do 2 plus 100, uh, 10 square which is equal to 102 mod 10. So then 102 mod 10 is equal to 2. So there can come a point in quadratic probing where we keep jumping around the array and with infinite iterations also, we will not be able to add that element into the bucket array. In such a case, we call this case secondary clustering. So, what is secondary clustering? We are unable to add an element in quadratic probing because the index calculated is never empty. So this can occur in quadratic probing but 
we are not able to add this element into the array but there still exists empty spaces in the array which cannot be reached so this is one of the drawbacks of quadratic probing for sure we are minimizing these clusters which form during linear probing but we have not yet taken care of secondary clustering that is when elements which are to be added are not being able to be are not being added because the index keeps jumping around the array into indexes which are not empty and even though there are empty spaces in the hash table we are not able to add that element to the hash table that is secondary clustering and that is the drawback that quadratic probing faces so this is how quadratic probing works and we will see in future videos how we are going to have a solution to this secondary clustering drawback